Secretary of State Mike Pompeo scoffing at Iran's foreign minister for saying that their top general was killed during a diplomatic peace mission. This as Defense Secretary Mark Esper is speaking right now saying the United States will not leave Iraq. Joining me to discuss a Fox News national security analyst Wally Ferris. Let me just start with this breaking news here because there was some confusion. A memo was inadvertently released to the public uh, and, and so questions have been raised on whether or not we will leave Iraq. It feels now pretty sore that Esper is saying, listen, forget about it, we're not leaving. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, um, Charles. This was a draft. I don't know what kind of draft. What is the context? That is not important. There may have been many, many drafts, multiple scenarios. The bottom line is that our leaders have made it very clear. We are not leaving Iraq, comma, to Iran. That's the real thing. We are leaving Iraq. We are leaving the Middle East to the people who should be represented in government. That is not the case yet, and not before ISIS is done, and not as long as these Iranian militias are wrecking havoc, not just against us, but against their own population. That is a fantastic point. Let me piggyback on that as well, though, because Esper also is saying that uh, we do not seek confrontation, we do not seek war uh, with Iran, of course, echoing what we've heard from the administration, including President Trump. Nevertheless, almost, uh, you know, many Democrats, many in the media start the conversation off with President Trump is starting a war. Uh, where's the disconnect here? Look, the opposition is the opposition, and we've seen it under the Bush administration. This is not a new scenario. Of course, they will choose any point of criticism against the president. I'm not handling this. But what I'm saying is that the Iranian regime, this regime with whom we have concluded a nuclear agreement under the Obama administration, did not abide by the agreement. That's as simple as that. If they had removed the nuclear capabilities, if they had not bought those missiles, if they have not uh, disseminated these militias in the region, I think we would be in a, in a nuclear agreement. They have broken every part of the nuclear agreement. The Europeans are making money out of it, so they want to continue till there is no <laughs> nuclear agreement. What we need to do right now is to signify to the Iranian regime that you are not crossing this thick red line of attacking us. Once they digest that, once they understand that, then we will open the door for negotiations, for ceasefire, for anything that would uh, help the Iraqis to, uh, to rise. And speaking of Iraqis, 700 people were killed by these militias headed by Soleimani. Where is the United Nations? Where is the opposition? Where are the Europeans? You know, speaking of, of uh, red lines and, and, and trying to get a message to, to Iran that they understand, We've seen them push the envelope over the last several months uh, with some brazen attacks that, uh, or, you know, that at any other time could have perhaps been a call for, for troop uh, in war, uh, whether it was our satellite, whether it was uh, shutting down Saudi's oil fields. How surprised do you think they were that the Trump administra administration carried this out? Obviously, mm. they had some sort of intelligence that said no other, no other administration had the nerve to do this or the will, and certainly the Trump administration wouldn't do it during an election year. You know, Charles, I think the Iran regime, let me give them a piece of advice. They should fire all their advisors. All their advisors in Iran, in the Middle East, and even within the West, I don't want to even say within the United States, because they were told, apparently, that this Trump administration is not going to react if you continue in your line to pressure American forces out. They were wrong. They were wrong. They thought that by not responding to the downing of a aircraft or of a drone, right. that we're not going to react to anything. Right. They, they made a big mistake. Real quick, I got to let you go, but I want your thoughts on this. When uh, asked about uh, attacking cultural uh, icons, Mike Pompeo pointed out that the Ayatollah damaged the Persian uh, culture. He's damaged the, uh, their, their country more than anything else denying religious freedoms, relying, denying cultural freedoms as well. Uh, the administration, uh, you know, Esper and both uh, Pompeo saying, we, you know, we're, we're going to abide by international laws, but pointing out that that culture has been violated uh, since the arrival of the Ayatollah. Absolutely. I mean, the secretary is right. Our leaders are right. Since 1979, I, I just, uh, you know, published two books about that, but very quickly, they have dismantled every aspect of cultural pluralism. They don't recognize the minorities' rights, the Arabs, the, uh, the Azeris, the Kurds, and others, and now they are lecturing about why the president used that language. What he means by that is that your ideology will be pushed against, not just your military. Well, Ali, always fantastic to have these conversations with you. We appreciate them. Thank you.